Athletic Commission. This belt is brought to you by America Presents and Top Rank Incorporated, and on the line will be the NABF and vacant USBA titles, and the winner will become the mandatory IBF World Championship Challenger. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest are Dana DiPaolo, Paul Silverman, and Peter Tremetera. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Rick Steigerwald. And now, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, let's get this party started. 12 rounds of boxing. This is in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with red and white and weighing in at 125 and one half pounds. His professional record, 20 victories in 21 bouts, including 10 knockouts with only one defeat. Training and fighting out of Big Bear, California, by way of hometown Brisbane, Australia, here is the reigning and defending NABF champion, Robbie the Bomber. He and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold letters. He weighs 125 pounds. In 39 professional bouts, he has 37 victories, including 29 knockouts and only two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas y Caballeros de Ciudad de México, Juan Manuel Mar. You're both professional, I expect you to act like it. I went over the rules in the dressing room with the guys before the fight. And your corner men too. I'm going to give you three commands. Stop, break, and box. When I say stop, only you stop. Step back your hands up, protect yourselves at all times. If a fighter goes down, you will go to the neutral corner. And you will come out when I tell you to come out. Shake hands, this is me, and God bless you both. Back to your corners. The best punch Robbie Payton ever delivered as far as the sport is Don't concerned it was the one in a sparring session with Barrera some weeks ago that damaged the rib and caused a postponement of his showdown rematch with Morales. We see what he has in a live fight. Logically enough, Peden says, if I can hold my own with Barrera in a sparring session, why shouldn't I be okay against Marquez? After all, Barrera's the best fighter in the division. Marquez is a guy who was once sought of in the horrible fight against Norwood. Many at ringside felt as though the decision should have gone the other way, but Marquez's career has been more or less mired in neutral since that time. This is another chance for him to step forward into the spotlight, and Emmanuel Stewart, he starts out working well with the left hand. He's coming out looking very good, and the fact that every time you get a report about anything happening, it seemed like from Big Bear, Robbie Peaton is involved, so he just about lives, I guess, all of the time where most fighters train up there. He lives as his permanent home, so he should be in good shape. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Fernando Vargas lets him use his home when he's not in training, perhaps when he's training as well, and he's been very generous, I've heard, to Pete. And Pete has been very generous with his comments, too, related to Fernando Vargas. They have a great friendship. Vargas is a guy who uh, elicits great loyalty from his friends, as many of them have proven in the past. The matchup here you have in Peyton, you have a what you call crafty fighter, very smart, very crafty, tricky. And in Marquez, you have a very basic, fundamental, solid fighter that has extremely good punching power. He has good follow through on all of his deliveries. Nothing fancy, but very basic. Classic form, Juan Manuel Marquez. When Norwood roughed him up, grabbed him, held him, fought him inside, Marquez had difficulty getting on track against the awkward and roughhouse style of Norwood. He must stand outside and fight Marquez. You give him a chance to do what he does best. He's a tremendous puncher. Very difficult to anyone to fight Norwood. He's left-handed. He gets down in very bad positions, which make it very difficult to land a clean punch. Good uppercut by Marquez. Momentarily stops the assault by Peden.
Took out two for small guys. 26 pound weight class loaded with talent. Barrera and Morales as we imagine. There's a big right hand by Juan Manuel Marquez. Top to back. Manuel Marquez. Top to back right clean. Watch the pushing down on the head. Watch the low blows box. Prince Nassim what? Hamed preparing to come back to action next month here on HBO. He becomes an economic force again as soon as he's active in the division. As we go to Juan Manuel Marquez's corner where they speak Spanish, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. You have to work a little harder. You have to use the jab a little more. You're going to eliminate this problem a lot faster. He's not very agile to, uh, to stand in front of your jab. Just go for it. We're nice and relaxed. Mark, Marquez is a very good punch. One of the four. One of the four. Okay. Got you. Right. I want you working the jab in more. Move to his right. Move to his right hand. Come back to the left. Marquez is a very good puncher with both hands. Has tremendous follow through. One of the things that concerns me a lot is the fact that. Keaton often holds his left hand down low, and that's one of the things that I'm very concerned about as the fight progresses, that he doesn't get hit too many of those right hands from Marquez. Round one, copy box numbers. Marquez, 17 out of 43, including 9 of 22 jabs. Keaton, 5 of 36, 2 of 22 jabs. Those numbers would seem to indicate that if Keaton wants to continue to fight from outside, he may have a problem. Marquez has better range. I personally was surprised given the profiles of the two fighters, when Robbie Peden said that he thought he could fight Marquez from the outside, it seems to me that if Robbie Peden wants to beat Juan Manuel Marquez, he's got to get inside and work the ribcage somewhat the way Norwood did. He's going to have to do that because sitting outside, even though Marquez is not that fancy, he's so basically sound and fundamental that it's very difficult for you to catch him with clean punches. And I'd like to point out that the trainer, Nacho Berenstein, has did a great job, I think, in training both of the Marquez brothers there. Unlike in the past, many of the Mexican fighters are very aggressive, but recently we're seeing a whole new generation of Mexican fighters who are very technically, in fact, they do a lot of counter punching. When you look at Barrero, you look at the two Marquez, they're fighting very intelligent now, much, much different, and actually outboxing most of the American fighters now. So the stereotype of the Mexican fighter is, is gradually going away and of course Beristain trained the great Daniel Zaragoza for a long time. Zaragoza was himself completely the opposite of the classic Mexican fighter. He was a guy who boxed you and won with finesse. I think that a lot of this is due to the fact that the Mexican fighters are living in so much intermingling with the American fighters nowadays and uh, training here in America and they've picked up on a lot of our techniques but still have to maintain that great punching power. That's, you know, and it's fact interesting, you're not seeing him throw too many of the Mexican left hooks to the body. It's compared to now, that's the interesting. Mexican no, it's, Marquez. It's, it's not a basic staple of Juan Manuel Marquez's attack. Uh, it isn't even really a part of what Eric Morales does. The left hook to the body is still something you see from Marco Antonio Barrera, although even he has now shown he can win without that weapon. Yes, he's become Marquez a balanced out fighter, and they're picking punches off very beautiful with their gloves up high. They continue to trade from outside. Peden had a moment with a counterpunch earlier in the round, but by and large, from this distance, Marquez seems likely to land more. I see Peden has changed his strategy now. He's decided that fighting from outside is not working. He's trying to move in and be more aggressive now. So let's see if Peden can find a way to get a half a foot closer and try to get into a position where he can begin to make his punches, punches mean something. This is interesting. I consider Keaton to be the crafty fighter, but at this stage right here, in every department, Marquez is taking advantage of the, the speed that he has and the punching power. Mark your calendars for these upcoming fights. March 23, Prince Nassim Hamed returns to the ring facing Manuel Calvo. Also that night, Johnny Tapia takes on Angel Vasquez. April 20, undefeated Floyd Mayweather 
steps up in weight to challenge lightweight champion Jose Luis Castillo. A brave step for Mayweather. If it's triumphant, it's huge. A week later, rising heavyweight Jamil McCline battles Shannon Briggs. McCline trying to move closer to the inner circle of heavyweights. He already may be in the top six. And on May 4, the long-awaited grudge match between Oscar De La Hoya and Fernando Vargas in a 154-pound title unification fight only on HBO pay-per-view. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Once again, you see Marquez landing those right hands over the... Check his eyes. Check his eyes. Yeah.